Welcome to Insights with me, Lynn O'Donnell. My guest today is Sanjar Sohail. He's a prominent Afghan journalist, the founder and publisher of the daily newspaper 8am, or Hash to Thug. It was started in 2007 and was the largest independent newspaper in Afghanistan, printed in Kabul and other major cities, and distributed in 20 of Afghanistan's 34 provinces. Sanjar, like many other journalists and media people, was forced to leave Afghanistan when the Republic collapsed. He and his colleagues continue their work in exile. Investigations are the paper's forte and they've brought Hashtisub worldwide recognition, including for Sanjar, who won a prestigious Emmy Award for investigating Taliban killings. Have a listen. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk in your uh, show. My name is Sanjar Sohail. I'm uh, the publisher and founder of Ashti Sultan newspaper. Ashti Sultan newspaper uh, was uh, the largest uh, independent newspaper in Afghanistan. We started uh, the newspaper in 2007 until the August 14th of 2021. Uh, the newspaper was printed um, in Kabul and few other other big cities and distributed in 20 provinces of Afghanistan. Right now, we are uh, an exiled media outlet. Uh, we work from different parts of the world. Uh, we uh, produce content in uh, four languages: uh, Farsi, Pashto, Uzbeki, and English. And what's you just? Where are you distributing now? Well, right now we are uh, everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, um, we recently uh, uh, launched a, a printed uh, weekly magazine of Ashti Soap. It's available everywhere uh, and people can order it. Um, and the idea is to also um, to distribute the printed version in the uh, retail stores at the, uh, North America. Um, we have big population of uh, the diaspora in, in Canada and in the US. So um, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can not only distribute the newspaper, but also generate some in income for the uh, hash to solve. Mm, through advertising? Absolutely. And how are you surviving at the moment? With grants? Mm. Right now we survive with grants, mm. yes. We get grants uh, from different organizations. The one thing that we uh, avoided uh, receiving uh, funding from governments. Mm. So for the past uh, almost um, uh, 15, 16 years, we never received any funding from government institutions because government funding comes with uh, limitations and uh, other issues. Conditions. Absolutely. Yeah, pressure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and how do you see your audience? You're, you're publishing in English as well. So yeah. are you trying to use Hush to still, um, still, still to get um, news of and about Afghanistan to um, a non-Afghan uh, audience? Absolutely. Well, uh, um, um, as you are aware, uh, since the, the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, um, access to information has become so hard. Um, the Taliban is also uh, systematically uh, limiting access to information. And uh, independent media uh, especially uh, is, is in, in more uh, difficulties for access to information. The Taliban is not allowing uh, my reporters to, 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 to work freely and independently. So I have people inside Afghanistan, they are um, working undercover. Mm. Uh, it's like um, now, like some sort of spying. Mm. Uh, but we are, we are trying to get uh, news out of Afghanistan as much as we can do. Um, for the past uh, two and a um, few months, two years and a few months, we, we've we been able to uh, produce a number of uh, the investigative reports about the torture, about killings, about atrocities of the Taliban, about the changes in curriculum, school curriculum, and uh, the, the situation of uh, women prisoners in the Taliban prisons 
So these are the things that we are, we are working on. But at the same time, uh, we want to uh, connect uh, uh, not only Afghans, but uh, um, others who are interested in Afghanistan matters. Mm, uh, uh, Afghanistan matters is, 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 uh, is not only uh, a local uh, matter, it's also, I think, uh, uh, regional and global, because there are things happening inside Afghanistan that could uh, directly impact the situation and the stability and security of the region and uh, the world. Well, indeed. But let's go back to uh, the way your reporters are having to work, as you say, undercover, which means in secret and at great danger to themselves. Um, the Taliban ha seem to be very, very clever in the way they have begun the manipulation of media reporting. There's still a lot of media organisations functioning. And if you look at some of the websites, they are doing reports on the treatment of women and um, s apparently seemingly critical reporting. Um, what do you think about that? I'm thinking specifically of uh, media organisations that claim to still be able to operate freely. Um, and it's very difficult when you look at some of the reporting that they're doing to push back on that. They can say, well, look, we are reporting on the way women are treated and um, demonstrations and protests by women. So this proves that the media is free. What do you say to that? Well, first of all, let me say that, that I, I, am, I am really proud of my colleagues who are reporting uh, and still are working inside Afghanistan with all those difficulties and limitations and uh, the, the, the level of intimidation and danger to their lives. Um, but to be honest, uh, um, uh, the, the, the media outlets inside Afghanistan is not able to, to report on many different issues that we are able to do it. Uh, uh, first, uh, 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 reporting on, on sensitive issues requires uh, uh, different levels of you know, uh, approval by the Taliban. And uh, at the same time, uh, I personally know that, that, that uh, the Taliban uh, officials are coming to the newsrooms and, and editing and, and uh, you know, censoring uh, news and reports. So um, expecting to, to have uh, impartial uh, news and information from the uh, media outlets inside Afghanistan is, is, I think, a little bit optimistic and it's not uh, based on the realities. Uh, but at the same time, um, um, as you mentioned, that, that my reporters, what's the situation with my reporters? Um, um, we, we have lots of, lots of measures in place to protect their, their identity, to protect their uh, safety and uh, security. For example, um, um, uh, my reporters in one province do not know the other reporters in the next province. Uh, even in, the, in our system, they, are, uh, have, they have their nicknames, like they have uh, numbers of uh, words that, that, that's, that, that represent the the province or the area, but not the name. So uh, we are trying to protect their identity as much as we can, because uh, we know that the Taliban infiltrate the systems and are trying to find out who is who. Um, and at the same time, um, I'm, I'm always telling my reporters that do not put your life in danger for a news, because any news does not worth a life of, 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 of a human uh, a journalist. So uh, they are also taking the measures. They are also uh, very careful, but at the same time, they're also trying to have those measures in place to protect them, uh, protect their identities and do not reveal uh, their identities to our uh, colleagues as well as to the outside world. Um, uh, the Taliban uh, try to um, uh, find uh, my reporters, in, especially in those two provinces, in Zabul province, uh, in the south, and in Panchi. They even announce bounties uh, among the journalists that mm. we, uh, if you find uh, the journalist uh, uh, of Hashtis, so we can pay you like 30 halves, 30,000 halves or 40,000 halves. But uh, fortunately, they, they have not been able to do uh, that. Um, because the way that we work, the way we function, 
uh, is, 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 is totally different. And at the same time, to be honest, um, uh, uh, in the past two, two years, we have learned lots of new ways how to protect ourselves, how to, how to you know, be uh, innovative in, uh, in ways to, 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 to access the information and at the same time, be uh, careful. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that your reporters stay with you or is there a turnover because of the fear it gets too much, pressure on families? Well, some of them, yes. Some of them actually uh, is having those issues inside the, the families, um, particularly one of my female reporters um, uh, told me that, that, that uh, uh, she's receiving unknown calls mm. and she is also receiving uh, messages on her Facebook. Mm. Um, but then um, uh, I, I told her that, you know, you should change your phone number, you should change your location, you should uh, uh, deactivate your Facebook. So uh, those measures uh, actually worked. And, and, uh, but then uh, after this incident, I, I, I told the entire team, do not talk about your job to their families. Uh, say that you're working with an uh, NGO, uh, working with a, um, I don't know, an international website or something like that. So uh, they are also now keeping their identities um, uh, secret from their uh, even uh, very close uh, uh, friends or family members. Um, one of the tricks that the Taliban is using for finding uh, about the identities of, of the people that they think is against their regime is uh, they, they hire actually uh, people uh, inside, uh, let's say, uh, neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, some some shop shopkeepers are spying for the Taliban. Taxi drivers are spying for the Taliban. Um, even uh, local mullahs in the mosques are are, are, are uh, spying for them. Uh, for for money or maybe for other incentives. But but yeah, they are trying to. Uh, they, they have actually used this method, this tech, uh, tactic for finding about the, the former security forces of Afghanistan, mm. for example, mm. for, for uh, finding uh, former um, uh, civil servants uh, of Afghanistan. Um, but as I said, um, um, as, as time passes, we are learning new ways how mm. to protect ourselves. Mm. It's something that I think is not very well understood, is this neighbourhood watch style surveillance program that the Taliban have introduced at um, a grassroots level of society, very similar to the way the Chinese communists did when they took over. They're either learning well or they've come in with um, a very um, developed mentality on social surveillance. Absolutely. The social surveillance has actually has been introduced to them by the Chinese government. Uh, they have also provided them with this facial recognition technology. Um, this facial uh, recognition technology is now um, actually um, uh, um, connected and, and installed in different parts of the country. But at the same time, they are also using this traditional methods of, of hiring local spies in, uh, in neighborhoods uh, for, for uh, gathering information, for identifying people, and, and at the same time, you know, uh, just to, to make sure that they are aware of the areas. So, um, for example, um, um, uh, in Afghanistan, we have like a um, um, special neighborhood for one ethnicity or one uh, group of people. Um, uh, uh, they have more spies in those areas, but in those areas that they feel a little bit secure or, or you know, um, well established, they don't need that. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, in, in Kabul, for example, the, the neighborhood of Khaykhana is mainly dominated by Tajiks and um, uh, um, particularly Panjshiris. Um, they have more spies and you, you can easily uh, know that, that you've been uh, watched and you've been followed and uh, there are people looking at you, there are people sneaking at you. Um, but uh, uh, this is this is the way, you know, that, 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 that the um, authoritarian regimes always, uh, they are always afraid of people, they are always afraid of um, uh, gatherings, uh, groups of people. Uh, so they are trying to 
um, uh, to 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 limit that as much as they can. Even in in some areas of, of Afghanistan, they introduced that uh, more than three people cannot stand in in one area or, or yeah. in in particular uh, spaces or particular places. So this is this is the way. And unfortunately, yes, Chinese uh, uh, government uh, is 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 trying to uh, not trying to, but but the actively supporting. Uh, the GDI, General Directorate of uh, Intelligence for the Taliban, and they are working with them. They are not only um, uh, introduced the facial recognition technology to them, but they also uh, uh, introduced the intercept uh, uh, technology, how to intercept uh, people's call and contacts and, 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 and movements and uh, things like that. Well, it's testimony, isn't it, to their own knowledge of how unpopular they are. I mean, they wouldn't be so defensive if they thought that they had uh, the approval of the Afghan population to be in power. Well, absolutely, absolutely. The Taliban, to be honest, is not uh, 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 the representative of the entire Afghan um, uh, population. The, according to, to surveys before the collapse, uh, there were uh, some estimates that, that even the Taliban does not have 10% uh, support among the Afghan population. Mm. With their uh, return to power, uh, I think that level has dropped dramatically. Uh, uh, you, you can easily say that 50% of the population, who, the female population of Afghanistan, do not support the Taliban regime. Uh, the rest of the, the, the population is, is maybe divided in, in uh, a few other groups, but, but I can say the majority does not support the Taliban because, uh, uh, first of all, Taliban is a, a, Taliban, a, a terrorist organization. They have killed people, they have injured people, they have robbed people, they have uh, beheaded people, and and uh, uh, all those memories are alive in in the in the mem uh, collective memories of Afghan. And at the same time, um, uh, uh, since their uh, return to power, they have they have treated people very badly. In a very primitive ways, you know. For example, uh, uh, they 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 they, they uh, beat people on the streets just because of uh, uh, not having, uh, according to their interpretation, uh, just because of not having proper clothing mm -hmm. or you know uh, or shaving their faces or 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 let's say. Um, uh, uh, Take, even taking showers, you know, like um, uh, we had a report in Ashley, so just recently about the earthquake in Herat. Uh, the first shock when happened, the, 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 all the females uh, came out of the houses. Then the, this uh, morality police came and said, oh, well, what are you doing on the streets without your mahram? Your, uh, um, and then they forced them to, to go back to their homes. And then the second shock happened, and the but that's why the majority of the, 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 the victims of the, that group was uh, children and, and women. women. Yep. Um, even um, I, I got a report that, that, that the local people uh, uh, um, um, rented a, a, a public uh, bathing, uh, public bath to, to just, you know, just uh, for the victims of the earthquake to come and wash themselves. Uh, they said, no, it's not allowed. It's a home in Islam. These are the things that 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 could uh, easily, you know, uh, make people angry about the Taliban policies and and the, uh, the, the millions of uh, millions of Afghan is is, is lo losing their patience and uh, they are not supportive of the Taliban. And at the same time, um, after that, the Taliban uh, returned to power. Um, uh, the economy is is totally collapsed. Uh, millions of Afghans lost their jobs. Um, millions of Afghans is, is now facing acute danger of uh, uh, food security or other 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 uh, basic needs, and uh, millions of others are, are are just seeking to leave the country uh, to a to a secure place, at least to have maybe a job or, or security or safety. Mm. Yeah, well, it's testimony to the reporters that you have on the ground, their bravery and their. Uh, tenacity and willingness to put themselves at risk to get those stories out. Otherwise, it's just darkness. Absolutely, absolutely. The last time when the Taliban was in power in the 
1996 to 2001, uh, Afghanistan was known to a, a country with no voice and no picture. So um, uh, this time, um, uh, uh, the Taliban is um, trying to paint a different picture of themselves in the public opinion. But uh, um, I, I say this uh, everywhere that Taliban is saying one thing in public and doing exactly the opposite uh, when, they, when they are in action. So uh, um, it, instead of looking at, at the Taliban's talk or pictures or, or, or you know, promises, look at their actions because their actions is, is, is the most important thing that, that, that proves that they are, they are not uh, uh, civilized people, they are not treating people um, 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 you know, normally, and they, 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 they think and they, they, they see people as their enemy. Mm. Uh, 40 million hostages, in other words. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like a, uh, an open prison. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, stories that you tell, um, you've mentioned um, the treatment of former civil servants and notably former uh, military personnel. Um, you did some very impressive investigative work um, in the wake, in the months after the yeah. collapse of the Republic. Can you tell me something about that? Well, yes, the, that, that report was um, uh, published uh, by New York Times because at the time we were un unfortunately unable to, to, to do the work, um, not only financially, but also technically. Um, so um, um, I started working with my colleagues on, on the ground to collect the, uh, the data about this um, uh, former security forces of Afghanistan, um, and 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 um, assess the promise of, of amnesty by the Taliban. Um, so, um, which was granted to everybody. Anyone can come back, work with us. You'll be safe. Absolutely. Yeah. On, uh, on the Doha Agreement, this is one of the you know the main parts of. And that. it was also one of the things that was picked up on by international figures, absolutely, government and military. This is Taliban two point Yes. That that was that was that was it. And if you yeah. knew, you knew. Yes, yeah. So um, um, we started uh, investigating the uh, the first six months of the Taliban in power, and we have collected uh, four hundred ninety cases of uh, killing, uh, forced disappearance, torture, shooting, and uh, missing people, and all of those people are former security forces of Afghanistan from different branches of the uh, security forces, army, uh, police, and uh, special forces, and uh, um, uh, EMDS, Afghanistan National Intelligence uh, uh, Security um, Directorate. All over the country? All over the country. There were, there were uh, uh, some provinces with higher number, uh, but uh, there is an, uh, an explanation for that. Uh, for example, in Baghlan province, uh, there were like around 100 people uh, killed uh, or disappeared. Or, uh, you know, that they just people found their bodies on the streets. Um, uh, in Baghlan province, the Baghlan province was, was, was the main source of special forces mm. of Afghanistan. Um, but there were uh, other provinces uh, with, with relatively the same number, and it was, it was all over Afghanistan. They, they publicly said that we, we, uh, we gave them amnesty and we should not uh, treat them like this. Uh, but but uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I found it that, that it was systematic. It was from the top down, and, and uh, it was uh, uh, like... Uh, to find anyone uh, uh, um, with the affiliation with the security forces of Afghanistan to be killed or tortured or uh, interrogated. For example, in, in Badakhshan province, uh, I interviewed a, a former um, um, uh, commander of a group uh, of the Afghan security forces. He told me that um, he was uh, um, uh, tortured every day every day for a few hours and then he was sent to a, a water well 
uh, naked. And uh, he, uh, he had no food, nothing, nothing, just, 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 you know, naked on that water. Submerged in the water. Yes, yeah, for hours and hours. Just for what? Uh, uh, asking him, uh, reveal the identity and the location of your friends or your colleagues. So he said that I spent like 27 days on that waterway. Then I, my case was transferred to the, pro, uh, to the uh, capital of the province. Um, and then um, once I was in the province, uh, they asked me, okay, if you're not revealing the location and the identity of your colleagues, uh, give us your weapon. I said, I, 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 I actually uh, 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 give my weapon the first day that you came to power. And he said, no, we know that as a commander, you may have more weapons. So uh, he, 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 he sold his house and uh, bought new weapons and gave the Taliban, and then he was um, granted uh, freedom. But uh, after the freedom, he was unable to live in, the, in his own area, in his province, and uh, he came to Kabul, and then he came to Herat, and then finally he was, he was not feeling safe and secure, and he, he went to Iran. Uh, so these are the cases. The the the, the people that that, uh, that the, this is not only numbers. Let's say this is the, this is not four hundred ninety cases. These these people were mothers. These people were fathers. These people were sons, daughters of 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 of, of a family or breadwinners of their families. You know now this four hundred ninety cases are are, are 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 just a sample of of what happened since the Taliban takeover. I have got uh, uh, more than 1,000 cases of, of, of ethnic cleansing mm. in the uh, province of Kandahar. Um, uh, probably uh, you, you know him. Uh, we had a very great commander in, in uh, uh, Kandahar called General Abdurazak. General Abdurazak was, uh, was so brave and so uh, uh, tough. Mm. To the Taliban, mm. um, so legendarily yes, tough. Yes, I, I met him. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so he was he, he um, when the Taliban came back to power, uh, they start killing uh, his tribesmen, and I, I I found a list of like more than one thousand uh, people from that district, um, but I was unable to confirm them because what happened? The entire uh, population of that tribe is actually gone from that space area. Uh, now, so people who weren't killed fled? Absolutely, mm. absolutely. They are, they are either on the other side of the border in Pakistan or they are now living in different other parts of Afghanistan. This is uh, Achaksai. Achaksai, yeah. And so essentially the effort was to wipe out the Achaksai. Absolutely. So if you now go back to spin back, uh, the mm. district of uh, General Abdulazir, you you cannot find any exercise living there uh, because uh, all of their men were killed and the rest flee the area uh, just protect themselves. I've actually found uh, a few family members and, and talked to them. Uh, they said, "Come on, do not talk to us. Come on, do not uh, open this wound again mm. uh, um, because we are now." living in um, uh, fear, or we are hiding, and if you report that we are still alive and survive, they may come back. They'll to come us. for us. Yes. Wow. So this is what happened. I, I believe I believe that, that since the Taliban takeover, maybe more than um, seven to 8,000 uh, former security forces of Afghanistan have been killed. Well, when you say this is a top-down order, the first person that you talked about was clearly in a district in uh, some remote area. So it trickles down from where? Did you trace the original order? Well, yes. I, I have actually uh, uh, I found a, a, a voice clip of, of uh, the current defence minister of the Taliban, Mullah um, Yaqub. Um, he was talking to a group of people, saying that, uh, no, this is not systematic. Maybe a few rotten uh, member of the Taliban is doing this, 
but this is not something that we have ordered. Um, that means, you know, that, that what does what does it mean? This is an excuse that they are actually saying in public uh, that we didn't order that. We, it's not systematic. This is just maybe personal revenge or personal scores, you know, between people in different areas. But if you go and see the 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 the, the you know the way that did it in different provinces you know that it was systematic it was it was something that was ordered because no province actually uh, is is uh, exempt from this this uh, killing and this forced this disappearance. It was absolutely nationwide absolutely, and absolutely. consistent in its approach. Absolutely, yes. And seven or eight thousand yes. is not personal yes. grudges. Yes. So um, uh, as I as I mentioned, it was just the first six months of the Taliban uh, in power. After that, um, um, uh, only my newspaper uh, is is is, is uh, reporting about these incidents. And every day, I can say that we have. Four, five, six, even ten cases of something uh, like this. Um, so uh, uh, these cases that that was collected by me and my colleagues were were so public, mm. so accessible mm. that uh, 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 either the the bodies of those uh, victims were uh, uh, um, found by locals, and it was a kind of story in the neighborhoods. Or um, people were taken by the rangers, by the uh, cars of the official cars of police and army, uh, and then uh, later, a few days later, their bodies were returned. So these these are the cases that were known. Mm. Uh, these are the cases that was uh, a bit public. Um, still, there are there are uh, bodies found in different parts of the country. Nobody knows about their identities, and they are being tortured. They've been, uh, you know, um, um, just left on the on the street uh, for I don't know for for uh, wild animals to be eaten yeah. or or something like that. Mm. And at the same time, I think this is this this was systematic because to spread the fear that yes. that we mm. treat. Our enemies like this. It's a reign of terror. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But your investigation of the first seven months after the fall of the Republic, the Taliban's regime, was published in the New York Times? Yes. And then what happened? Well, uh, then what happened that, uh, the, like usually, the Taliban denied. Mm. Um, they came and said it's totally baseless and they... they uh, said that uh, there is no such thing happened, um, and uh, yeah, unfortunately there are uh, some um, whitewashers of the Taliban also in in outside Afghanistan. They are also um, they attacked me. They attacked New York Times. For they attacked me. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't doubt so, you for a second. Yeah. So, uh, but but the, then um, this report was picked by uh, the Emmy Awards. And uh, unfortunately, the, 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 the report was nominated for two categories, uh, best research and uh, outstanding news analysis and opinion. Mm. So um, uh, we got uh, um, one Emmy for, uh, for this report. And uh, then after, after this report was, was uh, the winner of the Emmy, it got attention. So I got lots of calls from uh, within the uh, UN, U.S. administration, within the uh, um, uh, different other branches of the U.S. government, and they, they realized that, oh, this is actually something that we missed, that uh, we should investigate, and there are, uh, fortunately, there are still some people um, um, looking at Afghanistan differently, not with the uh, current administration of the U.S., and um, I hope that this, uh, the, the, these atrocities uh, should be uh, recorded and uh, the Taliban should be accountable for what they did mm. to, the, to those people, uh, to those Afghan security forces of Afghanistan and the rest of Afghanistan population. Um, uh, uh, also, some of the reports that we did um, got the attention of the International Criminal Court. 
they are also investigating those uh, reports and we are, uh, we are fully supporting them for providing them with the evidence, with the data that, uh, that we have. And uh, um, I am I'm hopeful for, for justice, not only for the, these victims, but for our collective memory. Uh, for the future of Afghanistan, because if we leave these uh, criminals uh, um, not go to court and walk freely and um, trap freely around the world, mm. I think uh, we are just um, also not normalizing terror, but also uh, we are normalizing uh, crimes against humanity, crimes against uh, um, you know, uh, 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 ethnic cleansing or, or things like that. Yeah. Um, well, I'm very uh, glad to hear that you are hopeful, but we're not talking short term or near term, are we? There seems to be, except for some people um, within the UN, for instance, uh, the special rapporteur and uh, the uh, Security Council's analytical team, um, other than that, there seems to be a willingness to either whitewash, as you say, or accept um, narrative washing, mm -hmm. um, which makes me pessimistic that anything will be uh, consequential in the short term. So far, no consequences. So far, doubling down, getting worse, getting away with it. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, uh, this is unfortunately this is this is what's happening to our world. To be honest, um, uh, uh, when I when I actually saw uh, how the uh, attention shifted from Afghanistan to Ukraine, and then from Ukraine to Gaza, this is uh, we're living in a very very uh, um, um, a very um, problematic era. Um, people are used to social media, people are used to um, breaking news, and they just want to just want to change their attention from one thing to another thing. Very short uh, attention span. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And once you see that 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 uh, there's a, a like change of policy or shift of policy um, in uh, the Western capitals, the entire system actually shifts its attention from one place to another place. I agree with you, and I think that the mainstream media is also at fault. But then again, if we look at the way the mainstream media has developed in the past 20 years, for instance, fewer and fewer resources have been put into uh, good reporting, and there's only so much bandwidth Absolutely. Yes. but uh, but i do believe that there is a um a real care amongst ordinary people and if you don't mind i'll tell you why i think that um, i was in new york in september before the uh, un general assembly meeting and i'd never been to the un building before so i went on a tour and when you go on a tour, you get to go to the nice big rooms with mm -hmm. the, the wonderful mid-century Scandinavian furnishings and it's, yeah. and it's fabulous. And I was with a group of um, random people. Mm -hmm. And when we were standing in the Security Council chamber, I was taking photos and one of the middle-aged, uh, probably retired American men who was there with his wife asked the tour guide, what about... Afghanistan, what, are, what is the UN doing for Afghanistan? And the tour guide said, the United Nations is working closely with the opposition to the Taliban. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and I walked up the steps and I said, excuse me, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not quite true. And people started to gather around and we had a conversation about the collapse of the Republic and what's happened there since and the, the horror of the evacuation and what the UN is and isn't doing. And I took away from that a very great interest amongst ordinary people in what happened and is happening in Afghanistan that doesn't filter up 
Absolutely. To government, to the UN, to the NGO yeah. platforms generally, and to mainstream media, which have yeah. a foreshortened bandwidth. Absolutely. I agree with you. That's, that's what happened with us. So if you compare the level of attention that we had before the Taliban takeover and the zero attention that we are now having on Afghanistan, it, it's like the, 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 the entire world actually uh, uh, forgot about, about Afghanistan in just a blink of eye mm. like, like mm. this. Mm. Because, and this is, this is not healthy, I think, for our world. Mm. Oh, we are not solving one problem and jumping to another problem and creating and creating more problems. And uh, then what? Maybe uh, in a few years, we see the disasters of these, these short-sighted policies and um, short-sighted attentions. Um, so um, we're just building on problems, on problems. For example, after the Taliban takeover, um, um, now everybody's uh, saying that, oh, Afghanistan is secure, is stable. But nobody is saying that it was the Taliban creating those instability and insecurity for, for not only for Afghans, but the entire region and the entire world. Uh, they have ousted Osama bin Laden and, uh, and uh, Al-Qaeda uh, uh, attacked uh, uh, and made possible the 9-11 and other other attacks around the world. So now it's the same. The same Taliban uh, um, is hosting 20 different terrorist groups and they are building on their capacities, they are training and they are uh, recruiting new people. And I don't know, I don't know what will happen maybe in the next one, two, three, five years. Um, because the, the the way that they, they are actually building on their capacities, uh, not only uh, by training, uh, but by recruiting people and turning Afghanistan into a, a, a jihadist madrasa mm. is, is, is somewhat uh, very alarming. Mm. It's really alarming because <clears throat> these people will not stay in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, they, they seek uh, jihad. And uh, um, as you've seen that, that since the Taliban takeover, uh, there has been lots of terrorist activities inside Pakistan. We have seen at least two, three suicide bombings inside Iran. Mm. We have seen uh, the security incidents in uh, Tajikistan, in Uzbekistan. And uh, this is, I think, just the beginning. Mm. Mm. Because what happens in Afghanistan, as history has proven, does not stay in Afghanistan. Absolutely. And at the same time, uh, now they have access to very sophisticated military equipment and guns and technology. Which are also showing up in other conflict zones. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. In different parts of the world, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, it's been very... Uh, it's been my privilege, actually, to talk to you today, and I'm very, very pleased for your Emmy. Congratulations on that. And please keep doing the good work that you do at Hash to Sub, and best of luck in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you giving, uh, for giving me this opportunity, and uh, I'm very proud to talk to you. three years ago on the media landscape of Afghanistan about the pressures that journalists doing proper journalism now face under the Taliban's autocratic regime. And he talked about the investigative work he did looking into the killings of Afghan civilians by the Taliban after the extremists took control of the country. That work won him an Emmy Award and helped draw attention to Taliban atrocities, which unfortunately continue today. Next time, I'll be joined by Natalie Gonella-Platz. She's a senior researcher with the George W. Bush Institute and worked on a very impressive series of reports called Captured State on what's happened to Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover. I hope you'll join us. Until then, I'm Lynn O'Donnell. Bye-bye. <laughs>